Let me show you exactly what's happening in your spine when you have a herniated disc and how we fix it surgically. Before I walk you through exactly what happens during a lumbar herniated disc surgery, let's first understand why you might need one. I'm going to explain this the same way I do with my patients in consultation. Your spine consists of bones called vertebrae. These bones are in the shape of rings and they all stack up together and form a column. This column has a crucial job in protecting the spinal cord and the nerves that travel through it. In your lumbar spine, which is in your low back, the nerves that exit your spinal cord run through this column. Then they travel through small tunnels at different levels of your spine and travel to different parts of your legs. Between each of these vertebrae are the discs. These are the shock absorbers of the spine. Now each disc has two parts, a tough outer wall called the annulus and a softer center called the nucleus propulsus. Now here's what happens during a disc herniation. Sometimes a hole can form in that outer wall called the annulus. When this happens, the softer center, that nucleus propulsus, can squeeze through this hole. Similar to what we see here, this herniated disc can cause two problems. First, it triggers significant inflammation around the nearby nerve root, causing pain and sometimes tingling sensations down the leg. This inflammation often subsides within six weeks or so, after which the pain can go away. However, if that herniated disc fragment is large enough, it can actually put physical pressure on the nerve. This pressure may not just cause pain and tingling, but it can cause numbness and weakness in your leg. And these symptoms may not go away without further intervention. When you first experience pain from a herniated disc, Oftentimes, non-surgical treatments will help alleviate your pain while your body works to minimize the inflammation associated with that disc herniation. Many people with disc herniations are able to successfully treat their pain without needing surgery. So let's talk about when surgery becomes necessary. If you have weakness associated with the nerve compression, then surgery is important to unpinch the nerve and prevent worsening weakness. If you have persistent pain despite trialing a course of conservative treatment options, then this would be another reason to consider surgery for a herniated disc. Typically, if you don't have any weakness, you should try at least six weeks of non-surgical treatments. This can include physical therapy, medications, steroid injections around the nerve, aim to reduce the inflammation and the pain. Oftentimes, a person's body can heal enough within six weeks that the pain goes away and surgery isn't necessary. Then over time, your body can reabsorb that herniated soft disc fragment. The goal of surgery is straightforward. Remove the herniated portion of the disc and unpinch the nerve. Now, here's something crucial you need to understand about outcomes. The surgery is extremely effective at treating pain. Many patients notice immediate relief. However, as I alluded to before, numbness and weakness are more complex. We can't predict exactly how much numbness and weakness will improve after surgery, nor can we predict how quickly it will improve. This is because the numbness and weakness can be the direct result of nerve damage, as opposed to the nerve being pinched. Think of it this way. Surgery removes the pressure on the nerve, giving it the opportunity to heal, but the nerve has to do the healing itself. This healing process can take up to a full year and the extent of healing is unpredictable. Now let me take you through the actual surgical procedure step by step. There are four main stages to a lumbar discectomy. Stage one is the incision. We make a careful incision in the low back typically in the middle or slightly to the side. And this location is precisely planned based on the location of your specific disc herniation. Stage two is exposure to the spine. This is where we carefully move the muscles to access the back portion of the vertebrae. Stage three is the most critical part and that's unpinching the nerve and removing the herniated disc. First, we remove a small portion of the bone and ligament 
to access the disk. Think of this like creating a window to reach the problem area. Once we can see the nerve, we carefully remove any additional bone or ligament that might be pressing on the nerve. Then we can gently gain access to the herniated disc fragment. The nerve is carefully protected during this time and we remove the herniated fragment, allowing the nerve to relax back into its normal position. This gives the patient relief from their shooting leg pain. And the final stage is closure. We carefully close the surgical site in layers and during proper healing. So what can you expect after surgery? Most people do remarkably well. You can typically expect complete or near complete elimination of your shooting pain down your leg. About 60% of people will also have a significant improvement in their low back pain. While surgery can immediately stop any progression of weakness, the actual improvement in weakness and numbness can take time up to a full year for the nerve to heal. After this year, you'll have a better understanding of what weakness may be permanent. And this is why proper expectations and patience during recovery are so important. This surgery is relatively safe and well tolerated. However, there are risks associated with this procedure as with any operation. Common risks include the possibility of a small tear and the protective covering of the nerves called the dura. If this dura tears, it can lead to some leaking of spinal fluid, potentially requiring additional treatment. There's also a small chance of infection or bleeding around the nerves. Nerve damage can occur, which may result in ongoing pain or numbness in the legs, but this risk is very low. Additionally, there's always a possibility that a herniated disc can come back. Remember that hole in that annulus? That hole heals over time, and then that soft jelly, that nucleus propulsus, can still shoot through that hole and cause a recurrent disc herniation. And that's why it's imperative that after surgery, you follow very closely your surgeon's recommendations as it relates to potentially wearing a brace and modifying your activities. The goal is to prevent a recurrent disc herniation later on. Now, factors like your age, weight, other medical conditions such as diabetes, and whether you smoke can all affect how you recover from that surgery. Despite these risks, the surgery often helps relieve pain and improve daily functioning for many people. I've performed hundreds of these procedures and the key to success is precision and attention to detail at every step. From the precise planning of the incision location to the careful handling of the nerve, every movement matters. Remember, while any surgery can seem daunting, understanding exactly what happens during the procedure can help ease your concerns and set proper expectations for your recovery. Subscribe to learn more about making informed decisions about your spine health.